A Telford man who lives with an extremely rare condition, in fact it's so rare that only seven people in the world have got it, is using his blog to spread the message, never let, let me try that again, never let a disability stop you doing the things you love. Ross Minton is 34 and as he's been explaining to our reporter, Bongi Mazimanga, it took him a long time to come to terms with it. I was born with a rare muscle condition. There's only seven people in the world with it. It's a, a genetic mutation that affects my limbs and my muscles and general all-round mobility. I was diagnosed since birth because there's a few things that you can see. My fingers don't bend properly. And also my mum had the condition. She's one of the seven. When she had children, it's the first thing the doctors really looked at. Can I have a look at your fingers? So yeah, of course you can. As you can see, they don't. I basically can't make a, make a fist. And my hands don't rotate all the way around. So it just makes general tasks difficult really so what sort of difficulties do you have not just the dexterity it's like the strength so i can find i don't know taking a kettle off the stove really difficult it affects every part of my life but in a say in the same way i was born with it so i'm kind of used to it if that makes sense i definitely can understand it's one thing to be in the realm of family and those who love you and care for you and want the best for you how are school School was difficult, really. I mean, I had some good friends, you know, the late 80s, 90s. Even the teachers weren't really disability aware. You soon learn, well, I did soon learn to fight my corner, um, sometimes quite literally. But it was like adapting and overcome, really, trying to do the best I could with what I could do. I was hiding my disability a lot. I, You know, I would not talk about it. I'd habit now, I've got my hands in my pockets, and it's something I just naturally do. And I suppose because sometimes to look at me people would just think I was a normal if you know that was the word really to use even when I met you I don't know what I expected but it wasn't what I expected but obviously now that you're explaining about your hands and I can see them I can see what you're talking about yeah is that frustrating it is and it isn't sorry as I've got older I've, I've come to accept my disability more and I, I now openly talk about it but I suppose a lot of the thing I'm doing now on my blog is I, I want to be open about disability I'm 34 I've got kids my son's got the same condition as me and I don't want him to hide away like I did obviously every father should think should be a role model to their son but whereas I had my mom to look at he's obviously got me and hopefully he can go on and achieve more than what I've achieved if you were to think back to the first time you actually realised you were not like the other kids, what was that like? In a strange way, I never considered myself disabled. The first time it really sunk in was when I was 11 or 12 years old. I'd always had this dream to fly and I would have joined the RAF. That would have been like my goal as a kid. It was like, I want to be a pilot. And then obviously as you do with a kid, you read books and you watch TV shows and, and I soon figured, realised that I would never ever be able to join the RAF because obviously they, you know you, you can't be disabled and be a pilot and that was the thing for me where I realised that I was different and I was going to have to change what I do in life to accommodate my disability and get the most out of it. How did that make you feel realising that your biggest dream in a sense had been taken away? It was difficult really but again the whole adapt and overcome thing you, you always focus on the positives or well, you try to it doesn't always work like that I was always quite creative almost straight away it was like right I want to be an architect or I want to be a designer I want to do something like that so I just cut the whole flying thing dead really and thought right this, that's never going to happen that's Ross Minton, who has been talking to our reporter, Bongi Musimanga, about his uh, disability. On Breakfast on BBC Radio Shropshire, you might have heard from Ross Minton from Telford. His medical condition is so rare that it doesn't even have a name. It's a type of muscle disability. Only seven people in the world have got it. For many years, Ross refused mobility help, but it was a flying lesson that changed everything. He eventually swallowed his pride and he started blogging about his condition and his hobby gardening. He's been talking to our reporter, Bongi Musimanga. It was incredible really because we'd had some bad weather so we hadn't been able to fly for a couple of days. There was a break in the weather and we got in the plane and he was teaching us how to and basically drive the plane around the runway and then all of a sudden he says we'll go and fly now and so I was pretty much thinking you know, obviously he's going to take control. He was telling me what to do and he said oh well we're going to approach the runway we're going to get the call from air traffic control they're going to say you know proceed to take off he says and I want you to approach the runway level up straight and then when you get to 85 mile an hour he says pull back on the stick he says and we'll take off and I just looked at him and went I've, I've been in the plane for about 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and he was like no no you, you'll be fine you'll be fine. It was a, a baptism of fire but 
I suppose in a way, I mean, he's a great instructor because there was no time to panic and I had to take off. <laughs> Incredible, amazing. Now, tell me about your blog. What is it about? How did it come about? I'm dyslexic, I always have been, and I, I very rarely write things down. When I planted seeds or to keep a diary so I started filming it and then all of a sudden the phone got full so I decided well I'm going to start putting these on YouTube that then developed into the whole gardening with a disability I think I've now got over 200 subscribers of people watching my, which Incredible. I which I still think is crazy and I'm not an expert gardener I do the things I like doing basically so we're here in your garden is this all your handiwork then it, 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 it is Shall we have a look around see yeah, what sure. you have this is my raised bed and that eventually will be a salad bed and as you can see with having a dog I've had to cover it up because he likes to go and have a root through my seeds yeah so (laughs) it's a plant one seed for me one for the slug and two for the dog I think so yeah and what else have you got here you've got quite a few things in there pots I've got some kale growing pumpkins sweet corn marigolds for the garden it's quite therapeutic actually garden I think it does help with the whole disability because the plants don't care if you're disabled or not to be a bit philosophical it's just you and the seed and you and the soil and it keeps me in a, in a good mental place I suppose when it comes to your mobility scooter you said that it was quite difficult for you to use one for a while you avoided it why is that because I've always hid, hid my disability, I didn't want to be associated as disabled or even be around other disabled people. So when I went to learn to fly, they paired me up with a guy called Dan who was in the RAF and he was paralysed and we were chatting away. I soon realised you don't see Dan as a disabled person and I soon realised that me not wanting to use a mobility scooter at any kind of mobility age was stupid really and it was my own pride getting in the way. I realised that there was parts of my life I'd stop doing, I'd stop going fishing to my favourite places, I'd stop going on family outings because my disability was getting getting worse and I couldn't do the walking with the help of uh, TGA the mobility company I spoke to them and, and said I'd like to do a series of blogs on accepting disability looking for help and aid and mobility scooters they were up for it and so we're working together on a series of blogs to hopefully encourage a few people to accept their disability go out there get the aids that they need I'm not going to say I'm you know the most positive person in the world I think that if you've got a disability where you're going to have bad days and you're going to be in bed The secret is to really and truthfully get your head down, get through them and remember that there is going to be those good days. For me, like every two or three bad days, there's a a really good day. And now I've got the scooter, I can can go out with the kids or I can go fishing or down my allotment. And so, you know, the scooter is helping my mental state, you know, get through the, the bad days, really. That's Ross Minton from Telford. If you want some gardening tips or advice on living with a disability, then have a look at the website, Ross Minton, that's R O S S. M-I-N-T-O-N, rossminton.co.uk.